Hey, what's up guys, Boba Rail here, and today I just wanted to sit down and talk about the meta for a bit, because aside from weapon frequency, it's been quite a while since we've talked about balancing on the channel. So let's jump right into why I think we're in a nearly perfect state of balance right now. So of course, this idea of being practically metaless is a consistently desired trait among pretty much all first person and third person shooter games. The inevitable goal is for all guns to have a roughly similar time to kill for the sake of consistency, and so a lack of outliers in both weapon frequency and physical performance is always a good sign for the health of a player base. And this is exactly what we've been seeing since the bugle nerfs of 9.1. This is definitely the most even balancing in the game's history, with most guns being perfect for their intended purposes. Now, keyword there is most, because there are some slight outliers both above and below that balancing line that I think need some slight changes. But first, let me take a quick second to address the biggest thing that I've heard over the last few months, especially back when the bugle was still being debated as a topic. I heard a lot of, well, after they nerfed the bugle they're going to go after the next best gun, because they just want to make every gun bad and slow the TTK of vigor. More specifically, I saw a lot of, after they hit the bugle, they'll go straight for the AUR and HBAR. To those of you who had that reaction to my opinions on the bugle in the 9.1 update video, I say, no, that is not the case in the slightest. And I think the purple and gold gun categories are very well balanced at the moment. The AUR is arguably the most versatile slash best assault rifle in the game, and that is perfectly okay due to its cost and scope glint, as well as its slower fire rate, making it pretty weak in comparison to SMGs at closer ranges. And it really only dominates at its intended medium to long range, the same pretty much applying to the HBAR. In fact, the only problem I see with the AUR is actually a bug with its first person, where the sight zeroing is not properly centered, so hopefully that can get fixed eventually. So if no purples present a serious problem, then what is actually left in the game that would be considered unbalanced? Well, it is mostly just small things, but the biggest and most obvious one is the M16. It's simply too good for a common gun that only takes a minute to craft, but luckily I think the solution is pretty obvious and easy to do on how to balance it. First, the fire rate is way too fast. There should be at least some delay between bursts when firing to prevent you from quote unquote M4ing people, because as of right now, there's practically no delay. Now, I don't mean it should be like painfully slow, but there's a reasonable point that this burst delay can extend, which would keep it from performing better than it should in close quarter scenarios. The other thing that might not even be necessary if the fire rate is nerfed would be just a touch of recoil. It doesn't need to be that much, and honestly, any changes made to that should be barely noticeable at close or mid range, the problem that it would solve would be the longer range burst sniping, because I feel at distances of 50 to 100 meters, the groupings for it are tighter than most other guns in the game and it's just too good. Now let me specify here that I don't think the M16 shouldn't be good at longer ranges. In fact, that segues into where I think the gun deserves a buff, and that's in its single fire. Shooting the gun in burst versus shooting it in single, there is a very noticeable disparity in per bullet recoil, which I feel is very strange because people shouldn't be punished for slowing down their shot pacing. Either way, for the M16, we just need more burst spacing, perhaps some more recoil in burst, and less recoil in single fire. Preferably, they should be done in that order over multiple updates to see what kind of effect they would have individually on the gun's use and its place in the meta. Besides that, there's nothing really that stands out as overpowered for its rarity right now, so let's talk about the things that I think need buffs. First off, pistols. They need to reduce their fire rate cap. People have been talking about it for months, but it still is as true as it always has been. The fire rate is way too slow, especially when you consider that 45 ACP is a 6 shot to the chest and 9mm is a 5 shot. Same goes for the PM and the PSS, but in my opinion those are a lot less important to me in terms of the meta. Honestly, I feel like the combat magnum would also benefit from a slight recoil decrease, but even right now in the right hands the combat magnum can absolutely destroy, so that's much less essential. Now, to bring it back to 45 ACP, I want to bring up that 6 shot to kill and how that makes the Thompson and Grease gun so egregiously bad. Like, because of their damage per shot and damage fall off, they have roughly double the time to kill of the main guns being used in the game, the 4 shot assault rifles. 
Now, I'm not saying make these completely cracked, because they are still starter guns, but bumping that 45 ACP damage from 6 shot to a 4 or even just a 5 shot, which is the same as 9mm, would make a huge difference. I brought this up a few times to people, and they've tended to disagree, saying that this would make them overpowered, and that I just want to make the game easier for new players. First off, overpowered is ridiculous. They still have terrible bloom, recoil, and bullet velocity, so they're still very much restricted to CQB, as they are SMG. But a buff to their damage would just allow the guns to be a bit more forgiving when they're hitting chest shots exclusively. The hitbox that any new player who just picked the game is going to be hitting 90% of the time. Let me reiterate here. 4 or 5 shot kill on the Thompson and Grease gun would absolutely make life easier for new players who just picked up the game. But that is a good thing. Both of them will still be much more difficult to use in comparison to any other common or uncommon guns because of the range limitations presented by their bullet velocity and bloom. Just with this change, they would fall much closer in line with the overall TTK and give a much stronger first impression of the game's gunplay to new players. Now, lastly, there is a serious elephant in the room that I've been meaning to address for a while now, but haven't gotten the chance to, and that is shotguns. Another long-going debate that I think is fairly ridiculous. In my opinion, shotguns and Vigor don't work anywhere near how they should, with the exception of the Lashiev. The Pigeon, the IZH, the Sawed-Off, and the KS-23 all have too widespread, and they just feel so inconsistent because of the random pellet deviation. Now, does this mean that it's impossible to do well with them right now? No, of course not, and especially if you're a good player who can use positioning and tactics to your advantage, shotguns can be very usable right now. I'm sure a lot of our shared viewers with Half Metal Fox see that all the time, as he practically mains the IZH. But at least to me, they are still not nearly as reliable or consistent as they should be, especially at ranges of 10 to 15 meters, where I guess you could say that that's not the intended range of a shotgun, but you still should be able to understand the damage that it's going to do. Sometimes you can either take half of someone's health away, or literally have all of your pellets go completely around them. My suggestion would be to tighten this pellet spread across the board by about 25% to make it more rewarding to have good accuracy. But with that, reduce the individual pellet damage to compensate and prevent people from getting one shots at farther ranges than they should. I know, I know, I'm sure about half of what I just said will start some kind of war in the comments section, and today I actually encourage that. I want to hear what everyone in the community thinks about the current state of weapon balance so that we can make the best representative decisions and make Vigor better for everyone. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail here from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.